Walking is something that we've been doing since our creation as humans. It is instinctive, inherent within us, and something that we do even without thinking about it. It is unbelievably convenient, allowing us to travel from very small to very large distances over a whole range of different terrains. And even today, when we have cars, trains and planes, it is still our primary mechanism for transport. Well, these benefits don't just stop there. Did you know that walking powerfully impacts almost every system within your body? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how walking affects your health, why you should be doing it every single day, and stick around to the end because I'm gonna go through my top tips on how you can enhance these health effects from walking. So let's begin. Hello there, my name is Stephen Hume and I'm a doctor of chiropractic and very recently I've become very interested in the impacts that walking has on our health. Now if you're sitting there thinking that walking is just simply something very monotonous, something we do every single day just to achieve certain tasks to get to certain places, well don't be fooled because walking has massive impacts on various systems within our bodies. So without further ado, let's start with the first one. So number one, it keeps our spines healthy. We have 360 joints within our bodies and 100 of those is within the spine that's just underneath a third so just like how muscles need to be used to stay healthy in the same way that joints need to be used to, to reduce the degeneration that we see within those joints and for them to function very efficiently and effectively the study to show that the more immobile a joint is the more degeneration we see in that joint in the same way that the muscles surrounding the spine also need to be used consistently and challenged enough so they'll be strong enough to protect your spine now what's interesting about your spine is that the major joint in your spine are the discs now what's interesting about the disc is that the center third does not have a blood supply which essentially means that the discs rely on a pumping action that occurs through exercise such as walking for nutrients to be able to be pumped into the disc and waste products to be pumped out of the disc and this is why we need walking and exercise to keep the disc healthy because if those discs don't get enough nutrients into the center then they can't heal properly and this is one of the major reasons why walking is so important for preventing low back pain. A recent study done in Japan earlier this year with around 7,000 participants showed how an intermediate level of physical exercise massively reduced the chances of people getting chronic low back pain. Chronic low back pain is going to be anything that's over three months so we're looking at long-term low back pain so it's really important that we keep our spines moving to prevent issues arising in the spine and keep our spines healthy now number two it improves mental health this is particularly important in times like today where we see a large amount of people experiencing depression and anxiety and suffering with mental health. Now what we see in high intensity exercise such as running or anything where we are exerting our body to a high degree is that we get what we call the run is high and what that is is that we get a release of a very powerful natural painkiller called endorphins and this circulates our bodies and gives us that really nice feeling. Now what we see with low intensity exercise such as walking particularly over a sustained period of time is that it causes a release of something that we call growth factor. Now growth factor is very essential within the brain because it causes nerve cells to grow and to make new connections. This is an essential role within the brain and something that we do every single day. So very important for improving your brain health. Now what's also interesting is that walking increases the size of an area of the brain that we call the hippocampus. The hippocampus is very essential for emotional regulation and long-term memory consolidation. Now the hippocampus is also noted to be very small in people that suffer with depression and anxiety. The two together would make walking play a big role in preventing against mental health. 
a 2013 systematic review which is essentially one of the highest quality research papers we can do showed that 150 minutes per week of physical exercise could play a really good role in preventing mental health. Number three, it improves heart and lung function. A systematic review done in 2013 that looked at the effects of nausea walking on a group of people showed that it significantly enhanced people's resting heart rate, their blood pressure, the amount of exercise that they can do, the amount of air that they can take into their lungs, as well as their quality of life. Now, as you can imagine, when you're walking, particularly if you're doing Nordic walking, you can have an increase in the amount of blood flow that's going through your arteries. The muscles within your heart are gonna be pumping harder and faster. And what we know about muscles is that the more we challenge them, the stronger that they get. So we can apply the same use it or lose it principle here. And this is why exercise is so important for heart and lung function. Number four, walking can help to control and improve your blood sugar. A study done in 2013 with older adults at risk of glucose intolerance showed that walking 15 minutes after your meal can significantly enhance and stabilize your blood sugar. This is because as you're walking, your heart is going to be pumping faster, your lungs are gonna be working harder, your muscles are gonna be challenged more, and all these systems are gonna be using more glucose, the sugar within your blood. So this is gonna to help to decrease the amount of sugar within your blood. It's gonna make insulin, which is a very important hormone for stabilizing blood sugar, to work better. Now just remember here that you don't have to overdo it to get these effects. Sometimes overdoing it or doing a vigorous exercise can actually temporarily increase your blood sugar. What's great about this is that these effects can occur for many hours after you've exercised. And number five, walking improves your immune system. There was a study done in 2010 that showed that people that walked 30 to 45 minutes a day had 43% less sick days per year. Now that's a significant number. And this is thought to be because as you're walking, as you're doing exercise, you increase the amount of immune cells that are released into your body and therefore helping to protect you from flu and cold and various different diseases that your immune system helps to protect you against. So lastly, I'm going to just go through a few tips on how you can enhance your walking to get more movement within the joints and essentially just to really reap these benefits through your every day. So my first one would be to walk a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes a day. When we have a look at a lot of the research that's been done, the participants were walking at least 30 minutes each day. And it's thought to be that's a, a good amount of time to be walking to get some good benefit. The government guidelines suggest that we should be doing 150 to 300 minutes of physical exercise every week. So that would equate to 30 minutes each day for about five days of the week. Now, what I would also suggest when you're walking is to think about two things. The first one is to increase your stride length. Now, the reason why I say that is because you're gonna get more movement within your hips and your knees and your ankles, which is gonna really help to get those joints moving, keep them healthy, get more muscles activated. My second tip would be to allow your arms to swing naturally by your side. Now, the important thing here is not to force the arm swing, but just to allow them to swing naturally along your side. Now, this is because your arms are very much linked to your spine and they move in concert with your spine and the rest of your body. I hope you found this video as interesting as I have. Please do hit that like button and subscribe for new videos every single week. Comment below the one thing you've taken away from this video and I'll see you next time. Oh,